Over on Facebook the other day, uh, somebody asked about the uh, what the difference was with the, the different books that are called Gazetteer for Greyhawk. And I thought that'd be an interesting thing to explore today on Greyhawk Rognard. <laughs> So back in 1980, um, TSR put out the, the the folio version of the World of Greyhawk. This was the uh, the thing that came in a folder, um, and you know had the, the two beautiful Darlene maps, and it had a little booklet called the Gazetteer. And this is a 32 page book that goes through the history the different countries the geography um, it gives everything as uh, is laid out in the Flaness in the year 576 uh, there are things about um, runes and glyphs there's uh, things about um, uh, uh, geography and the uh, timeline of history days of the year movement rates different types of settlements. I mean, it's pretty comprehensive considering it's only 22, uh, 32 pages. You know, and it's got other ancillary maps that show, like, p patterns of migration. It shows the uh, the rest of the of the continent, but that got kind of retconned a little later. Um, and it's, you know, it's just very nice, compact, very well uh, executed. And it really shows... Um, Gygax's gift for understatement, right? There's just enough detail that you that a DM can take it and run with it uh, without completely overwhelming the DM or the players with reams and reams and reams of minutia about every possible aspect of life in the Flaness, which I gotta say is kind of what happens in the Forgotten Realms. It goes the, in, in exactly the opposite direction. Um, so this was kind of the standard. It was later replaced by the gold box, um, and that had the guide and the um, glossography. Two books. Uh, uh, the guide was pretty much the same as this. Uh, it added a little, some things here and there, uh, especially about deities. Um, and then the uh, the the. Um, Glossography had a lot more game mechanic kind of stuff, like encounter tables and, and stuff like that. But um, it, it maintained the, the brevity when it came to the country descriptions and what was, you know, which, which country was where and who was the leader and recent history and what kind of army do they have. It was very, you know, in a couple of paragraphs, they cover even the biggest uh, nations. And, and that's, its, that's its real gift. Fast forward to the year 2000. <clears throat> and Wizards of the Coast has bought TSR, and they have come out with their uh, Dungeons of the Dragons 3.0. And this is the the next edition of the Gazetteer, because at that point, uh, the world of Greyhawk was the default setting for Dungeons and Dragons. And this is an attempt to kind of recreate that original... Uh, Gazetteer feel with the advances in the timeline that happened because of Greyhawk Wars and from the ashes and all that good stuff. Um, I I'm not gonna lie, it it's not as good as the original. Um, it tries to be. Uh, it tries to have that same level of brevity, but maybe it's just because third edition kind of demands a little more crunch in there. Um, it's you know it. it it's hard to put your finger on it, but there are weird changes uh, that are made. Uh, de new deities are introduced just out of the blue. Um, for example, Al Akbar, the high priest, is the god of guardianship, faithfulness, and duty. The faith of Al Akbar dominates the culture of the Western nations with its sense of community and, pri and propriety. That's a brand new god uh, that wasn't in uh, the gold box. And um, all of a sudden, it's dominating the entire western half of the Flaness. That's that just strikes me as, as weird. Um, the whole thing is also pretty much an ad for the next book that we're going to talk about because in the back of this, it actually says, uh, "Wait a couple of months, and you'll be able to get a much bigger book." Um, <clears throat> but it goes through, um, you know, the, the same sort of material. It has a list of uh, community sizes and things like that, and um, 
it has uh, you know the, the different nations and it's got geographies it's got entries on the different forests and mountain ranges and and stuff like that so uh, when it comes to that it's it's not too bad plus it comes with unfold this gently this map of the Flaness, which is really um you know, obviously it's not Darlene, but uh, but it's not bad either. It's uh, you know the the you know what's what. You know what's a mountain range. You know what's a forest. You know where the cities are um, because of the aspect of this, the sizes and the and the thing, and the and the need to fit uh, the map to the. Uh, to to the paper, um, it tends to distort things uh, on on the long axis, so that things are a little uh, further apart than they were in the Darlene map. But that's not a, that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, it does. Let me see if I can get a close up on this. It does give an inset to show you where the Flaness is in relation to the rest of uh, the the planet, uh, which is really nice. Um, there are some new settlements here. It obviously uh, reflects the um, the changes to the uh, to the kingdoms and everything. There's no more Kingdom of Erity. There's Alyssa and there's North Kingdom and uh, things like that. You know, so they they kind of obviously they're going to follow uh, what changes happened in the in the timeline. Uh, but the map uh, itself is is actually pretty decent. Later that year, later in two thousand, uh, we come up with. The, the Living Greyhawk Gazetteer. And this is an odd duck. People who've been uh, watching the channel for a while will know I'm uh, ambivalent at best about Living Greyhawk. And I know, don't please don't flood the comments. I know a lot of people really love it and it's awesome. And oh my God, I had so much fun back in the day and I was in a triad. I, I, I get it, I know, but I don't like it. Um, for a number of reasons that I don't want to get into specifically. One day I'll make a video about why I don't like Living Greyhawk uh, in, in general. Um, but it, it kind of... Uh, it's This is where Greyhawk, in my mind, starts to fill in too many of the corners. Where you've got f detail and detail and detail and detail, um, which is a natural consequence of thousands of people writing adventures. Uh, for, for a setting um, that it starts to achieve um, Forgotten Realms levels of detail and, and, and stuff and it's very hard to keep track of everything that's going on um, and there are inconsistencies between the living Greyhawk and the rest of the published Greyhawk um, it's 192 pages it's got really like I say a lot of detail uh, about history and, and, and what's going on presently. Um, it's got a lot of uh, things about um, all the different gods, uh, and, and this is all stuff that's necessary because you need this if you're going to be in a living campaign. Um, yeah, you know, you need this level of detail because the the different players and DMs across the living campaign, uh, you know, who are at cons around the world running adventures and stuff, they need to have a baseline. So I understand the need for that, that you need to have that level of detail or else DM one over here is going to make a different decision than DM two over here. And it could have a real impact on how the same adventure is played out. So you need to have that level of consistency. I get that. Uh, and for a living campaign, it's understandable. Um, now, a lot of people uh, love this, obviously. And I, I, I do it. Uh, I acknowledge that, <laughs> um, even though I might not agree with it myself. So um, this also came with a map. It's basically the same map that was in the earlier uh, 2000 Gazetteer, except <clears throat> it's bigger. Right? It's the same map, this time with hexes, and it's just blown up to a larger scale. Um, so all of the comments I made about the map uh, a couple of minutes ago apply here. Uh, it's it you know in terms of art artistry, it's not Darlene, but it is very functional and it gets the job done. Um, you know you, there are some changes in the settlements and the cities and stuff like that. Uh, it does have that little bit of stretch uh, in the middle, but it's it's very good and you know it's it's, it's definitely usable, uh, definitely uh, better than some maps that that I've seen uh, <clears throat> and. Um, so those are the three different uh, gazetteers. Um, the first two are the most similar because they're both uh, relatively brief 
and uh, they cover the same material in much the same way. Um, it, it, they give you high level uh, uh, overviews of the different countries and geogra geographical features, um, and they do it in a way that doesn't, you know, just overwhelm you with detail. The third one, the Living Greyhawk uh, Gazetteer, uh, it goes the opposite direction. It gives a ton of detail. It includes uh, information on deities and a whole bunch of other stuff that you don't see in these other uh, books, uh, but is but the kind of thing that you would need in a living campaign. So, um, you know, so anyway, um, I hope that uh, gives a little bit of uh, clarity as to what's the differences between the three gazetteers. Uh, if you liked this video, please hit the like button. Um, that's why it's called that. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I've got a Patreon. Uh, I've got a uh, web store. I've got a, a blog with all kinds of free downloads and articles and stuff like that. All the links are below. And um, uh, have a great day. Mm -hmm.